Hi, everybody. My name is Holly Menninger, and I'm the Director of Public Engagement and Science Learning at the Bell Museum. Today, I'm speaking to you from in front of Gaia, a 23-foot diameter sculpture of Earth created by the artist uh, Luke Jerram from the UK. Gaia is on display for a limited time through August 14th here at the Bell Museum's Horizon Hall, and we invite visitors to come get a good look at planet Earth up close. Along with Gaia itself, we have weekly story times under the earth, a seek and find activity, and a recommended reading list for families. One of the books on our list has been written by our special guest today, Dr. Stephanie Shuttler, also known as the Fancy Scientist. <laughs> Stephanie is a scientist, communicator, entrepreneur, and author of the new book, My First Book of Earth, All About Our Planet for Kids. There it is. <laughs> Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Briefly, could you tell us what the book is all about? The book is really a broad introduction to planet Earth. Um, so it takes you from landforms to oceans. It takes you into outer space, really all the major components of planet Earth. And it breaks it down in language that's, that's really simple for people to understand. Awesome. Who's the intended audience for this book? This book is made for three to five year olds, but I have been um, sharing the book with my friends and, and colleagues, and they've been telling me that um, their kids are learning so much from it and they're loving it. And some of these kids are like seven years old. Some of them even said like middle school audiences will benefit from it because um, in schools, they learn about earth science in middle school. And um, honestly, I think adults will really benefit from it too. So if you have a three to five year old, you're probably sitting down and reading with them. And I'm sure you're going to learn a lot too as well. I will say that my seven year old and I have enjoyed reading it together <laughs> as, as, as <laughs> That's well. Great. So I'm curious, uh, what was the most like surprising earth fact you learned um, in the course of your research and, and writing of this book? I think probably the most surprising and my favorite earth fact is that the inner core, so, so deep, deep inside the earth, the most center part of the earth is extremely hot. And it's actually as hot as the sun is, the surface of the sun. So I think that's just so interesting because, you know, we think of like going down the rock layer from the surface as being, um, I mean, just even when we touch dirt, it's, it's cooler. And then as you go down deeper, it's usually cooler. So to know like really deep down inside the earth, it is super, super hot. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, would you mind reading us your favorite passage from the book? Do you have a favorite passage? Sure. Maybe I should yeah. ask you that question first. And, and, <laughs> yes. uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to hear you just read a little snippet of it. It would be awesome. Sure. My favorite passage um, is actually probably the, the first page, the, the introduction to it. So it starts off, um, welcome to planet Earth. Have you ever gone outside and felt the dirt beneath your feet, breathed in the fresh air, or looked up at fluffy clouds in the sky? These things and more make up our amazing planet Earth. And I just love it because it really sets the stage for, for the book. And it really reminds us that that this planet is all around us. Like it's that we, things that we can't see, like, like the air around us um, and things we can see, but are maybe it, kind of intangible or out of our grasp, like clouds. And then it is the dirt beneath our feet. So I really like that it, it sets the stage for the reader and it brings them into the different ways that we can interact with this planet. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And it sort of sparks that curiosity and wonder. Mm -hmm. I think that's something with our having Gaia here, it's giving you a different perspective and making you think about the all of the, the layers and the complexities of, of our planet. Yeah, what, absolutely. What inspired you to write a children's book? <clears throat> I have always wanted to write a children's book. Um, through it, my work with um, the North Carolina Museum of Science, I worked on a camera trap project, which um, has to do with animals and wildlife. I'm a wildlife biologist, and my work involved kids. 
And um, in addition to studying the animals, I also studied the kids and their perceptions of animals. And I got into science because I really care about conservation. So through all of that research, um, so I work with teachers in their classrooms to be more specific. Through all of that research, I realized that really the most important thing for conservation is, is to inspire kids and get them to be lifelong conservationists. And when they're young, they're really receptive to that information and they form an emotional connection to either the animals, the plants around them, and they take that with them throughout life. So after that, I just became really interested in writing a kid's book. I also um, wrote a different book and I realized you could self-publish. So it became very like a real option for me. Um, but actually with this book, I was approached by a publisher. Um, so they, so they um, presented the idea to me and I wrote a writing sample for them. And at first I was like, oh, planet Earth, you know, I'm a wildlife biologist. This is kind of um, um, a little bit different than I'm used to. But um, I'm also a career mentor for wildlife biology. And so many of the jobs that, um, that I look at with my students, they have to do with earth and not as much the, the wildlife. Like a lot of, there's a lot of like vegetation sampling and you have to think about the animal's diet and their habitat. Um, so, so I was like, it's actually not that, that different because it talks a lot about um, different habitats on earth and um, I really just like fell in love with planet earth again when I was writing it and it was really just such a fun opportunity. I gotta ask you what is your favorite place on planet earth? You wrote a whole <laughs> book about planet earth. You've got to have a favorite place. Uh, tell us about it. That is super super difficult um, but I think if I were to name one place um, it would probably be in, in Kenya and you're probably thinking I'm going to choose like the savannas with all the animals. But actually, one place I really liked was on this this um, this beach uh, named Watamu. And it just had the most like I love the ocean. Sometimes I think I should have been a marine biologist. It had the most like beautiful aqua waters. And um, one of the coolest things that I love the tides, I love low tides. And then you can see like it had all these rock formations so you could see all these different animals and they would get trapped in, in some of these um, tide pools. I mean, tide would come back in, so it would be okay. But it just exposed like all of this underwater world of fish and eels. And I just had like so much fun, like hours and hours, just like looking at the different organisms within the tide pools. So that's probably my favorite place. What do you hope that parents and kids take away from this book? I hope that they really just take away a, a greater sense of respect for the earth. And um, as you mentioned in the beginning, that like initiating that curiosity and exploratory nature, um, a lot of times people think that conservation or that nature is this really far away place that it's in Yellowstone National Park um, and that it's this really like untouched area by humans, but really nature is all around us and the earth is all around us. So no matter where you live, um, if it's, you know, New York City, I just was in New York City, you can go to Central Park and there is nature there. And it doesn't even have to be a big park like Central Park. There are trees. You can look up at the sky, look down at your feet, the ground beneath your feet. And so I just hope to really inspire people to have that sort of a sense of wonder and, and curiosity about our planet. The last line of the book reads, how can you say thank you to the earth today? So what advice would you give to young readers about things they can do to protect our planet and the vast diversity of life on it? I think the most important thing to do is honestly super easy, which is talk about it. And really it's, 
the communication and education of people about how important our planet is that will really cause people to do these other sort of changes that I mentioned in the book, like pick up trash or, I mean, there's so many things you can do, reduce, reduce your consumption, eat more plant-based, all these things are helpful to the earth. But in order for people to do those things, they have to really care about the earth. And some people or lots of people, we just go around kind of like blind, not, not seeing these, these different elements of earth, but they're actually really important for us too. There's a lot of research that shows that going outside in nature has really calming effects, can help with a lot of mental health um, issues. So, so really, I think the most important thing people can do is like carry on this, this message of respect and interest in the planet and conservation and make it more normal so that it becomes the opposite where it's like, you know, you're kind of an outsider if you're, if you're, throw, if you're, if you're taking bad care of the earth and really make it normal and, and cool and a positive experience. That's fantastic. Well, that is a great note to end on. So thank you, Stephanie. Um, we are uh, so excited that we were able to have a conversation with you today. So you can pick up your copy of my first book of Planet Earth, wherever books are sold. And Stephanie, do you want to tell folks where they can learn more about you and follow you on social media? Sure. If you just Google or go to fancyscientist.com, you will find me and all of my social media handles. I have lots of blog posts about about earth about nature about wildlife and um if you're interested in wildlife biology careers i also give a lot of advice on how to become a, a scientist and specifically a wildlife biologist awesome thank you very much you're welcome thanks for having me